Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about some military upgrades that our enemies in Afghanistan just recently acquired thanks to a uh, pretty poorly executed withdrawal from that country. I know people on both sides of the political aisle or even independents across the spectrum, let's say, of politics are quite upset at how things went down. I know I'm upset. All my friends are upset because not only was that operation botched, but we left the uh, Taliban in possession of some very sophisticated weapon systems. And in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the small arms that the Taliban went from using, like this AK-47 here, which is a Hungarian milled receiver AK-47. Uh, this would be representative of some types of the weapons you would find in the hands of the Taliban when we arrived in Afghanistan. And then we're going to show you some of the weapons that we've upgraded them to for 2021. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe, and also to hit that notification bell. That helps us out tremendously. Also, comment down below. We love reading those comments, and we try to respond to them for the first day or so after a video goes live. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. Take a look at some of the small arms that the Taliban now has possession of. If you guys haven't checked out primaryarms.com online, please check them out. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel. They have outstanding inventory. They have everything from firearms to every accessory you can imagine, from optics to bipods to bags, um, magazines, things like that. They have, again, great inventory, good prices, quick shipping, and outstanding customer support. Please swing by and check out primaryarms.com. So, the Soviets got into a war in Afghanistan right around 1979. The Mujahideen, which was the primary militant force, there were other groups, but primarily the Mujahideen over there uh, when that war kicked off, would have been using older antiquated weapons when they started fighting against the Soviets. They would have had primarily World War II air weapons. They would have had some modern Chinese AKs and things like that, but you would have seen a lot of Enfield rifles, LaBelle rifles, Martini and Henry rifles, even uh, Mosin and Gantz, all sorts of type of World War type weapons, World War II type weapons, I should say, were in common use. But as that 10-year war, you know, ground on, the Soviet weapons became very popular in the hands of the Mujahideen and later the Taliban because they had access to them. Now, a lot of people would say that rifles like this, you know, old worn AK that I have here uh, are superior to the M16. It's just not a true statement. Uh, many of the, the weapons that the Afghans um, and primarily the Taliban were fighting against the weapons that they have are really old, antiquated. A lot of the AKs are probably smooth bores by now. They have had those weapons for a very long time. After the end of the, the Soviet war there, they had their own little wars internally against other warlords fighting each other. So those weapons were used. And so by the time America got there, their small arms were pretty well used and in pretty sad state of you know disrepair. But the Afghans, once that war kicked off with the Soviets, had military assistance from multiple different countries. So the United States started kicking in money, kicking in weapons. Probably the most notable, of course, would be the Stinger missile system. But the Chinese were pumping in AKs. And then, of course, they were capturing tons of Soviet equipment, armor, vehicles, even aircraft, and, of course, small arms. So you, we went from when we got over there, fighters using things like this, to... The Taliban getting a free upgrade from a botched military withdrawal from the Afghan war, the Afghanistan war. Uh, we left them with modern updated weapons. So now the Taliban has gotten out of the 1950s and 60s, and now they're in the 21st century with small arms, thanks to Uncle Sam. Now, this is something, of course, that has angered people across the political spectrum. This is not a political video. This isn't Democrat versus Republican. People on both sides of the aisle and the independents are very upset at how this went down, how the war finally ended. And you have BBC over there talking about, you know, all these U.S. weapons, some of them brand new in the crate that were just simply left behind for the Taliban. And more and more of the news footage, you're going to see Taliban fighters holding weapons like this, which was the primary weapon system for much of the war by the U.S. Army. This is a Colt M4. So the M4 rifle system like this is definitely an upgrade to a 40-year-old AK or AKM. The Afghans before that didn't have, you know, easy access to modern optics, night vision, ACOGs, you know, like this EOTech, stuff like that. That's a big improvement in terms of if you have stuff like this, the hit probability goes way up, which is why the United States military uses it. Um, trading an AK for something set up like this is a big upgrade. And so that's really unfortunate. This weapon 
is still in common use by the U.S. military and what I think a lot of us find particularly disturbing about the withdrawal and how it went down, the fact that these are now in the hands of the enemy, is that if we ever have to go back into Afghanistan, we very well might, might find ourselves facing an armed group using U.S. weapons against U.S. forces. Everything from helicopters, MRAPs, up armored Humvees to M4 rifles like this. So let's take a look at another upgrade that the Taliban got thanks to the, you know, botched withdrawal, because there are some other ones, and this is not a comprehensive list. This is just an example of some of the small arms that the, uh, the Taliban got an upgrade to. Throughout much of the war in Afghanistan that we were involved in, the United States Marine Corps used a rifle that looked much like this. Later in the war, towards the end of the war, they, there would have been a switch to M4 rifles, and then we saw the IAR or the M27 come online as well. But this would have been the primary fighting rifle of 0311s, which are infantrymen in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, again, this one has its 20-inch barrel. You'll notice it has a peck on the side of it with a pressure switch on a CAC, vertical foreign grip, lots of re rail real estate here on the CAC rail, and of course you have a Trijicon optic on it. This weapon is vastly superior to an iron sight smoothbore AK that's 50 years old and well-worn. Not only did they get modern weapon systems like this, and with modern electronics like this, they also got the nods to go with the IR lasers. So again, we just gave the Taliban a huge boost in technology simply by leaving weapons like this behind in droves. This is a very accurate weapon. The Marines used it to great effect. It's just a little bit too long for CQB, which is why they ultimately went with a shorter weapon, I believe. Uh, but, you know, this is a very, very lethal upgrade that the Taliban got, thanks to Uncle Sam. Let's go from mild to wild. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the US M9 service pistol, but we would have left a bunch of these behind as well. The Soviets would have left behind a lot of Makarovs, Torkrevs, things like that, that they would have used or would have been given to them as uh, foreign aid. And now they get an upgrade to the M9 service pistol, which obviously we've moved away from, but we would also leave them with M17s and M18s, I would imagine, as well. But throughout most of the war, this is the handgun that served U.S. forces. And this handgun, in my opinion, um, is just a better handgun than what they would have had access to left over from the Soviet Union. Love Makarovs. I think they're amazing guns. But this is a more modern fighting handgun, and certainly the M17, M18 uh, goes even further with its polymer frame and things like that. So... This is a pretty mild upgrade that they got, but still could be used against innocent civilians over there, but also U.S. forces should we find ourselves back over in that hellhole. So let's get a little bit more wild. This is the M249 saw. Yes, this is a Cold War era weapon, but it's still a very modern belt-fed light machine gun chambered in 5.56. We would have left a lot of these behind. I've seen plenty of Taliban fighters running around with saws, and of course, PKMs are still fairly popular over there. It's a darn good machine gun. But you're also starting to see more and more Taliban showing up with things like the 240, 240 Bravo, 240 Lima, and guns like the saw here. The irony in this, we left weapons like this behind in Taliban, in Afghanistan for the Taliban to use. But if you owned a full auto version of this, your own government would come, kick your door in, maybe shoot your dog just to get it away from you and put you in prison for 10 years. But we had no problem leaving thousands of these behind for the Taliban to use to basically exploit their own people and to, you know, do evil things to other human beings. So that's rather upsetting. The M249, again, would have been available with a number of different optics. It's a belt-fed weapon, which can also use magazines, quick-change barrel. It has a lot of features that, you know, a modern military would want. So this is definitely upgrade, in my opinion, the light machine gun to RPDs that they would have used, which was never really a very good light machine gun, and other guns. They even use DPMs over there. I've seen Afghanis run around with DPMs. Uh, this is definitely an upgrade. The PKM, it's a darn good machine gun. Obviously, they're still using it, but uh, I don't like the fact that they have saws. Another weapon system I've seen in the hands of Taliban fighters is the SCAR-17. The SCAR is probably one of the most modern small arms that we've left behind over in Afghanistan. This weapon makes extensive use of polymers, lightweight aluminum extruded receivers, a pencil weight barrel uh, that is capable of sub-minute accuracy with ammunition it likes. So it's not only a very effective 
you know, main battle rifle for an infantry soldier, but it's also capable of being used as a DMR or even a sniper rifle. This thing's much more accurate than the junky old PSLs you see them toting around out there. Uh, this thing is very, very capable. And seeing this in the hands of our enemies is really something, again, that grinds a lot of Americans' gears, mine included. So this is another example of extremely modern tech that Uncle Sam left behind that might be wound up um, might wind up being used against our own forces or our allies at some point. So in the end, the whole point obviously about this video is some of the stuff that we left behind, but this is a very small fraction of some of the, you know, more advanced technology that we left in the hands of our enemies. They have our mortar systems, they have our drone systems, they have Connex containers full of ammunition, they have M110 sniper weapons, they have M24s we've seen uh, being used by Taliban soldiers. We've left them with everything from incredibly capable aircraft, incredibly capable armored vehicles, to incredibly updated and capable small arms, which we've shown you a few of in today's video. And so that's truly unfortunate. I think that whole withdrawal will go down in history as one of the biggest military boondoggles. Uh, it certainly seems to have, you know, wound up being worse than the withdrawal from Vietnam and seeing helicopters lifting people off the roof of the embassy during the end of the Vietnam War. I think this is even worse what we saw coming out of Kabul. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. You'll get early access to videos like this, direct access to me. I answer all questions you guys may have. And we've built a fun online community. Again, that's patreon.com. There's a link in the video description down below. Also, right here on YouTube, we have a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Click that join button and consider supporting us here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.